So let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to click right here on all recipes. I'm actually going to pick a different one because I think I already have that one. So let me just, it uh, doesn't matter which one you click on, as long as it's free. And it tells you all about it, reviews, features, we'll read all that later. But you all see the green install button. Everybody click the green install and you're going to start to get an issue. It'll tell you in a second. Oh! You don't have, and this will only happen one time, right? Because from now on you'll have a Microsoft account. So on this blue screen, so we get a blue screen to pop up when you hit install. We're just going to hit next. Oh, before we hit next, look, just read it. Be interesting to see. It's asking you, what do you want it to sing? I'll let you read it for a moment. So I would actually check the start screen, but it's up to you. You see all the stuff that goes with you? Isn't that nice? Yeah, I like them all to go with me. I don't want to have to, now when you move into a computer, you don't have to redo all this stuff. It's just there, which is awesome. And you can have many Microsoft accounts. Let me explain my world. I have a school one that I use here at CVCC. I have it in my office with all these things, and I have a personal one. Personal one, I have my favorite games, I have my Angry Birds, you know what I mean? So you can actually create multiple Microsoft accounts, and whatever you log in with, those apps in that world appear on your screen. Make sense? So let's hit next. What we're gonna do here is, um, we're gonna, your CBCC email won't work here. So we're gonna go to the bottom, and pick create a new account. Do you see at the bottom? It's small letters. Create a new account. Click there. <clears throat> and what we're going to do right here is first pick in the middle or use your favorite email. Do you see that? This is where it says or use your favorite email. Click or use your favorite email. And the first thing I'm going to have you do is type in your new CBCC email address. So mine would be hoisingtonc at cbcc.bccs.edu. And then you can fill in the rest. If you just want to do initials, that's fine too. But I put Corinne Hoisington. It's my work email. And I have no trouble with that. Okay, well, what, what, after the app, what if it's not? So you have to pick that right underneath where we said, or use your favorite oh, email first. I yeah. did that. That's <coughs> there you go. <coughs> put in your oh, same okay. password that you use. So everything's the same. You should put in your password that you're using for you. Yeah, so that way you're not going to have one that you remember, one that you don't. Keep them all the same. And you'll hit next. <laughs> and it, the reason it's asking your birthday is just to make sure that you're over the age of 12. <laughs> Um, or you would need a parent's permission to download apps. Oh. I'm going to have a hard time getting my dad's permission. Well, we're not too old. Um, <laughs> no, you're never too old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to pick this up. <coughs> yeah, it's you have to it's really scroll So, hit next. I know I have to do this once. This will just tie the two together. And the characters, they're making sure you're not a bot. I hate that. Uh, but, yes. Is it case sensitive? Um, it probably is. So put them all in caps. I think they're supposed to be all in caps. We'll get this through one time. This is why he said, I don't know. Though. <coughs> And you can uncheck if you don't want to be, you know, emailed to that, obviously. Karen, when, when our um, email password changes, mm -hmm. which it does, mm -hmm. then how do we change those? This will all be tied together now. If you change it once, it'll change here too. So that'll be nice. And you don't have to go back in. They're tied together. So, I'm just going to change from this code. Now, what was the answer to that? Oh, um, it, it, it'll keep updating it, so this will all be tied together. Wow. 
So you're going to type it one more time at the bottom to make sure. Are they, are they yes, asking for codes. Yes, with caps. And what we're going to do is say, I don't, I can't do this right now. If you click at the bottom, it'll get you past the code. I can't do this right now. Oh. But it, it, it's still set up. We're good. And connect. Well, I have to go back and do that later. Or? At one point in time, you get a, you'll get a code, and the next time you log in, you put that code in later. And hit close. <coughs> so we're <signed. coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, and we're, oh, we're just going to hit. I, I can't get to the code right now. It's the same as time. Oh. And I think there'll be one more. Hit. I um. I think I found Okay. You might uh, so it may, may not have it. Maybe you just log in with that. And we'll let you we can just, maybe just watch this part, but now I had uh, closed your right down. Now I install this. Yeah, I can't see the code right now. That's one of my favorite messages. Connie hit connect. Gail hit connect. Larry in a minute hit connect. Yeah. Liz, uh, Liz hit connect and hit, hit close. Close. Yeah. And now you can even see it. Yeah, it's yeah. not one of those. Go ahead uh, and hit. Oh, it's going to be. Sorry. Plug it down. Hit close. Yeah, yeah. keep it. Keep trying to get that to um, it's we'll let you install. I'll go check your CVCC email on these computers and we'll find out that code. So let me get you there. Hit the blue E on your start screen. Or any of them. Okay. So just say close, we're just going to check your CVCC email and get the code. Go ahead and get your code from CBCC. It's um, <coughs> this morning. William finally took our CBCC, you know, the mail.cbcc.edu, and now it's forwarding to the right site. I said, put a redirect for people, please. <laughs> Which one? <coughs> settings. So what kind of account is this? Exchange. What? Um, you guys don't recognize the CBCC website. Oh no! Huh. We can't even get to CBCC. No. Yeah, they were all in it. Yeah. 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 You were allowed to do free apps if they were paid apps. You'd be, I mean, if it were big software, but apps are, are very small. So they want to go to your cloud. So you can click verify. You can't even get into your account. This link is no longer valid. Yeah. We're unable to complete your request. Is that what you guys did? Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, yeah, that's what I got. The first time. My app is installed on my PC. Okay. Uh, kind of, of course. She's the only one. Yeah, I already got to use the Yeah, I don't give her too much credit. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had a great account. It looks like uh, our web is now no longer connecting, so we try. <laughs> but we will end up connecting at some point in time whenever we have this. I don't know it. This is because we're in the But anyway, <laughs> let me just show you on my screen. So from now on, as soon as they get everything cleaned up with our Microsoft accounts, you'll find any app, you'll hit the install button after you're synced. And then what it's saying up here is, hey, I'm busy installing. So let me ask you a question, see if you remember. Is this installing to your start screen? or to that alphabetical list underneath the start screen. The alphabetical, the alphabetical list. So it says Hangman Pro is installed. Let's go see. I don't see a Hangman Pro anywhere. But if I hit my down arrow and I go to the H's, it says Hangman Pro. And how do I know it's new? It says it. I like that. 
This means I have not put it onto my main start screen. So someone help me. How do I do that? I can right click right here. And it just says pin to start. So I'll do that. And now it's on my screen. Oh, there it is. Okay, make sense? So sorry about the, once they get that cleaned up. Um, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> Let me show you two other things that you can customize once you do have your login. So just look up this way for this little five minute section. You will notice there is an app called <coughs> Music and Video. And I know this is, I'm going to step out of my teacher position into an entertainment role because your students are going to ask you this. This is fun stuff. But I do use music in my class to motivate students. Uh, I know Bob Modem. He teaches economics. And if he's talking about the downward turn in the economy, he plays music like, I'm all out of money, you know, those kind of things. So let's say you want to do that. Once you create your account, just watch on my screen for this. I can now click or tap music. And you can put in any artist or group since Sinatra to Lady Gaga and play it for free. Let me show you how. So someone give me a group or an artist. Adele. Um, so uh, I'll go to type in Adele. And the reason that you have to have your Microsoft account set up because you know it wants to keep your music for you. I will search Adele and I get a full catalog of every single song Adele's ever done. You say, well how can this be for free? Well it's like Pandora. Every hour I'm going to have to watch a 10 second, 20 second commercial to keep this running. So I'm going to pick Adele right here. And now I can play any song that she's ever done. Let's see, here's all her albums. Let me do Skyfall. So I can now play this. Do I have my speaker turned on? Let me make sure I do. These are new little mini micro speakers. They're about $20, but they can get this guy. this is the end. And if I click down here, working on anything and I'm going to be listening to Adele's all of her songs the next hour at the end of the hour I'll have to listen to the two second commercial or 20 second commercial and it'll keep on going so you can keep doing all of that so if you want to use any kind of music any song you can even type a title of a song or a genre even listen to radio stations and it's all built into Windows and just to sign up first um, not sign up but just put your Microsoft account in Xbox Music account, create a profile. That's just, you know, your Microsoft account. So same thing. Xbox, all that, there's got 10 names for it. So you can put all that same stuff in right there. So I've even created radio, free radio stations of people that I like to listen to. So um, you can do any of that kind of stuff. Let me show you the video piece as well. Um, a lot of teachers on campus have wanted to use educational videos in their class but years ago, we used to go to the library and make sure we had all the <coughs> copyrights, our ducks in the row. But a lot of these free educational videos are now under the video app. But again, you have to, I get uh, any of these things up on my screen. Um, you can now, some of these are paid, some of these are for free, but all the educational titles are often for free. So I can just search up here. And let me just, let's say I'm teaching Abraham Lincoln today. If I typed in Lincoln, it would show me everything that I could get with Lincoln. A movie, if I click on it, it might say, ah, oh, it's $1.99. But some of these are free. Look at this, Abraham Lincoln versus zombies. <laughs> uh, but a lot of these that are available for free, or any TV shows are available, but some of those cost money. If you have your Netflix subscription, you can put that login and password, and it will keep playing. So it accepts Netflix, um, HBO to go, all that kind of stuff would play this way. So we're starting to see all of that. And once you pay for a movie, or record a movie, you can see some of the crazy ones, then you don't have to pay for it again. It follows your profile, no matter where you happen to go. So we're getting some of the basics down here. Let me show you some more stuff that I want you to know. Up next, I'm going to show you a little quick video, and then we're going to personalize our screen a little bit. You say, what do you mean? Well, let's get you in there. 
Are you starting to feel like this? <coughs> Check this out. To understand this little video, everybody watch the little words at the bottom. It's uh, in another language. This is a store selling Windows computers. And learning Windows 8 is a little you know, daunting, it's different. So I'm going to show you a little demonstration. I mean little. Oh my gosh. And watch some of the movements he makes. See if it's starting to make sense to you now. You see how he does his three gestures? We'll show you that. See how you look around? And look at the uh, faces of the adults. I love their expressions. <laughs> See how he moves to the left? Do you remember that clicking in the left corner? Microsoft went out, 
and they went to the uh, vice president of Google. I hear you have brains behind the operation. What are you making with Dublin? And over here, she's the uh, head engineer of Apple. What are you doing? You won't take double. We'll pay you triple, she asked. <laughs> so they went around and asked all these people and put everybody in the new room and said, hey, you guys are building Windows 8. And a couple of the hands went up, first hand went up and said, hey, can we have the Windows 7 code? No. What we want you to do is build an operating system not based on double click and all those things that operating systems have been based on. We need to meet the new needs of all this stuff. And you can kind of see the apps that we're using is what people need today. So they totally redid it. And that's why this is so different and so lightweight. It's not so chunky. But one of the things they ran into is they rethought everything. They, for example, you used to put a web address at the top, but then you would scroll down, your mouse would be here. Why do you always go back up to the top to type in a web address? So they put everything down here, but you can open more than one tab at a time. Let's try this. So we're at the CVCC website. Um, oh, sorry. Um, right click at the bottom. Oh, you're in a different one. I'm sorry. Let's go back to the start screen. And click this. Oh, blue screen, bluey right there. Right click? What's happening? Oh, yours is at the top. Yours is linking to the old browser. Oh, well, yeah, mine's going to be. She's kept up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Actually. Okay. They um, really need to do some work on this. Yeah, we're having, we're going to have a fun semester. Let's see <laughs> so you can see my world on a daily basis. Um, so here at the bottom, Let's change the web address. Let's come down here and just type in cnn.com. And as you change to these different addresses, when you hit enter, you can see that they're showing you favorites at the bottom and typing them in. But now I want you just to right click anywhere on your screen. Just right click anywhere on your screen. And you see at the bottom, look at my screen, you see this plus sign? You might want more than one tab open. You're working on 17 different web pages today. So let's hit this plus sign right here. And now let's go to foxnews.com. So you have a couple news sites open. Who's not having a good day? <laughs> Uh, right click again anywhere on the page and now can you see that you're starting to create more than one tab open so if you just want to keep you know going you can have a hundred tabs open at once I doubt anybody wants that many but you can how about if you want to close this page what should you do go to the very top and pull straight down everybody back on their start screen we typed in, and you can right click at any time and add more tabs. And then you right click at the bottom. Anywhere. And add more tabs. Now, let me show you a little bit more here. What we want to do next is I want you to open the charms bar. Let's see if anybody remembers that. What's, how would we do it with the maps? We go up to the top and pull straight down. How do we do it from our keyboards? Window C. Window C. Okay, here's our charms. I want you to go to the search bar right here again. Hit search. And I, let's say, I cannot find my weather app anywhere. Everybody type in weather. You see a pop-up if it disappears totally on you? And you can hit enter right now, and it should open your weather app. Does everybody get your weather? Okay, close it again from the top to the bottom for me. Now let me talk about one feature, open up your search charm again. You all know how to get there. So when they were building Windows 8, another person raised their hand and said, you know, the one thing we hate about Windows is viruses. Isn't that a pain? And everyone, if you've used a computer more than a day, has been faced with getting a virus. So Microsoft, if you're not a big corporation and you're not doing, you know, heavy, heavy 
where you need firewalls and all this special stuff, has now a free built-in virus protection into Windows 8. You don't have to pay any extra money. Let me show you where it is. So this would be great for your own home personal computers. Type in the word Defender right here. What's the word? Defender. And do you see a program that comes up? If, wow, well, you probably pulled it off the school computers, but you'll see it at home. Let me show you what it looks like. It is? It's called Windows Defender. So let me just click on Windows Defender on my computer. So Here's all I have that. I have that. You have that. You have that. Click it. Yeah, William has overwritten it, but you wouldn't overwrite it at home. This is what it will look like at home on a Windows PC. And you don't have to buy a McAfee or a Norton. But let me tell you a little, I kind of, a mini scam that's going on. Let's say you go to Best Buy today and buy a Windows 8 computer. They start at about $200 to $250 for a Windows 8 computer. But some of the computers can easily go up to $800, $900, just to let you know the price range. So you get this Windows 8 computer. I bought this Dell. I got it from, this, uh, from Dell and they sent it to me. And I flipped it on and it said, we have bought you 30 days of McAfee virus protection. But if you want to protect yourself the rest of the year, $99. You all have heard this, right? You've seen this? So I called Tell and acted like I didn't know what was happening. I used my hair color. And the little gentleman from India who answered the phone said, Oh, no, no, no. Yes, we know Defender blocks everything, but we get a kickback from McAfee if you buy it of 10%. Oh, wow. So uh, what most I tell all my students as soon as they leave their computers, uninstall that protection and just type in Defender and see where there's a check mark, flip it on. Because Microsoft is fully built it in. So why pay all that extra money? And a lot of our students certainly don't have that money. Understanding is where you use. I just typed in Defender. Oh yeah, un uh, if I, to uninstall, let me show you. It's a great question. If you just type in the word uninstall, it will find Okay. Um, where uninstall and walk you right through it. So that's a nice thing. Anything you'd want to know how to do it. If you need to start typing it, it'll tell you how I like this. If you've already got a, got a lifetime protection. If you, you have lifetime, yeah. great. I mean, just keep your lifetime. But right. if you don't, if you have to pay for protection, that right. sounds bad. But if you have well, to pay for that. Under off, like it's turned off here. Yeah, um, you can, if you have lifetime free protection and it's great protection, use it. But. I don't have lifetime free protection, so I. Right, I mean, how do you do it? How do you how like if I install Windows 8 on my computer, I've already got the Viper, so I don't need Defender. So how do I turn Defender off? Because you can't have two running. You can't have two run at the same time. Um, what it, I I don't know how you what protection you'd have to install whatever protection that you use. It's already on the computer. Okay, so. Def it's, no. Defender would be automatically turned off then. Oh, okay. Yeah, because both can't run. Okay. You have to have one or the other. Okay. So you don't have to do anything. So um, that's already built in. So I like that. I have been all over the world with this computer, logged on to every weird network, and have never had an issue. And that's really nice. And it'll have to pay any continuous it's not money. something you have to download. It's already part of this. It's part of it already. And it can be turned off, but if you just type Defender and click it to turn it on. So, so it's already part of it, nice, no, and it continually updates itself. But I have to uninstall what I have now. Yeah. Um, maybe wait till it's, until they ask for money. Expiration. Yeah, and then do it then. So um, that's, I did the first day because I didn't want all that mess on my computer. And I have had trouble with that virus protection causing problems with Blackboard, but Defender, no problems. So much, much easier. So how does Microsoft update their virus signatures? Um, they do it the second you connect to the internet every single time. Uh -huh. So it's up to if they're, you know what I mean, they're constantly doing it. So it's good, it's not better than North than some of these other, right? Um, it's been rated just as high as all of them. Uh -huh. Companies like CVCC sometimes add an additional firewall mm -hmm. to all this stuff in addition mm -hmm. because they're trying to block traffic, meaning different people's logins who shouldn't log in. But in your home computer, you don't have that issue. So it's all built in. Okay, so let's find this one. Yours is going to look a little bit different. Do you all see a tile on your start screen called the desktop? Yours is going to look like CBCC. 
Do y'all see that? So everybody click on your desktop, and you're now, you should kind of feel like you're back in Windows 7 land. <laughs> it should look, mine's gonna look a little different. I don't have the CDCC background. But you should now have a pretty traditional background. Now there is a start button in the bottom left hand corner here, but what does it do? Go ahead and click on that start button in your left corner. <laughs> so you do have a start button, but it takes you to start. Uh, now click on your desktop again, that's that CECC picture. But let me just show you, if you're on a home computer, your picture by default will be these daisies. So that's what you might see at home. Now, this is very similar. These icons, they're actually called icons, need double clicking. They're that old environment that we're used to. But they've improved a couple pieces back here. And let me show you. What I'd like you to find down here, let me see how they have uh, your school set up. What do they have on yours? Just different pieces and parts. Not much. Not much. Not much. <laughs> okay. So what we'll just do right here, oh, let me get to something so you can see. Oh, let me go to. Um, I wish William's taken off your main Windows Explorer, and I'm not sure why. That would have been a lot easier if it gave you a folder down there. Um, let's do it this way. Right click on that. Just make sure we can. So. Oh, okay, I see. Um, everybody, right click on your Start button. And you see the very top thing that says Programs and Features? Just click there. <clears throat> so you can get to your uh, typical control panel and all that kind of stuff <coughs> right here. But I really just want to go to a file. William, he took away the uh, my computer. My computer. Uh -huh. um, let me get back to it somehow for you guys. Busy done. Let's get to... Recycle bin get you there? Kind of. Double click the recycle bin. That'll get us there. That'll be good enough. I'm just trying to get to files. Double click the recycle bin, and on the left, everyone go to this PC. This PC is my computer now. Do y'all have something like that when you click this PC? Let me get everybody there. Uh, we're just double click on recycle machines. I can fucking do this. And this PC. Are we there? <laughs> this is only because yeah. the way William has these computers can be. Yeah, right. yeah, I'm going to go after them a little bit. If you were to put Windows 8 on air, it would look more like office mine. computers. It's going to look more like yeah. that, right? Yeah. He's locked things down because he wants to be protected. So, do you all see the little pictures folder right there? Let's just uh, open. Uh, there should be a picture of something in there. Is there not? Empty. No, no, empty. Not anything. Okay, let's uh, try the documents. Anything in any folder anywhere? Music pictures. Music is there? Anything? So let me just show you a line, as because uh, uh, you kind of get the idea. So let's say I click on an item for the instructional share. The instructional share, you'll be able to find an item if you're connected. The, some of the staff may not be collect, connected to the instructional share, but okay. So here's a picture. I'm wearing Google glasses right there. Just a picture. I want to show you up here. It used to be that you had to <coughs> right click on any file name to see things like properties or size or path. Do you understand that if you buy a tablet? Everybody look at my computer again. A tablet. Right clicking is a little less obvious. So what they've done is put everything up in their ribbon that you could still right click, but if you don't have a mouse, it's up there. You see, what do you mean? Well, now I can click properties right up here. It said properties right up there, and I can see the properties without right clicking. That's kind of nice. What else is here? If I want to remember where this path is, you know, if it's that long, it's on C drive, I can just hit copy path, open word and paste, and I can find out where is this file. So they've taken everything and moved to, copy to, delete, rename, and made it much easier to deal with. And one of my favorites is under the little share tab. It now says zip, not that compressed mess. 
that it used to. So they've kind of made everything, here's where your print is, and all the different things, they kind of made it much easier. So you can still right click, you can still use your control shifts and your control P's and all your different things, but they have a new way of doing things to make it easier as well. So you'll see that back there. How do we get back to the start screen, everybody? Let me show you a couple other apps and you're going to get a little fussing on your machine from because we're not totally uh, synced yet. Let me show you a couple things. Let's have a little fun for a moment. Most of these new computers, yours does not, but the new ones will all have cameras, right? So there'll be apps that say camera and a lot of the games. In fact, Ernie, I'm going to have you come up and help me do something. Everybody say, go Ernie. Go, go Ernie. Ernie. Aren't you glad it's not you? So I'm going to have Ernie stand right next to me right here, and I'm opening, watch me do it. What's the name of the app that I'm opening on my computer? Ball Strike. So Ernie's going to play a little game. And what I'm going to do up here is, Ernie, you're going to play a game, but you're not going to ever touch my computer. I want you to put your arms up like you are in that, see that person? You're going to punch in the air a ball, one balls. Punch that ball in the air. Don't hit my computer. Go. Punch. Make a punch with your hands. It's okay. He'll do it that way. <laughs> How is this working? How? I mean, he's not touching anything. It's working. The camera. So the camera is built in, and you don't have to install it or anything. You just download an app. It knows your camera's there, and you can play all these kinds of games without doing that. Everybody give a round of applause. Are you going to be selling these five by sevens in just a little bit? How do I close this, everybody? You got it. You burned three counts. Three counts. That's good. So there's a lot of health games and so forth that you're able to do, um, you know, just without any, you know, device or anything in your hands, which I think is kind of. Hey, Kareem, can my cat play it too? Yes, actually, yes. <laughs> so, you have a very smart than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I want to show you just a couple other apps built in, so at least you have a concept of how they work. Do you see this one called People? The problem has become with all the social networks. I want you to pretend that this aisle right here are people in my life. I'm going to make you my sister. My sister only connects with me through email. She doesn't Facebook, anything else, so you'll be my sister. We went to school together. I keep up with you on Facebook. You're famous, and I stalk you on Twitter. <laughs> Got it? Okay. And we used to work together. Have, we lost a little contact, but I know her through LinkedIn. Does that make sense? If I need to contact her, how do I do it? OK, I've got to log into Facebook, find her name, and do a message. If I want to contact him, what do I do? Do you all see my problem? Yeah. So Microsoft says, you know, that's pretty common. So we're going to make, if you want to use it, you can. If you don't, no big deal, right? It's called the People app. I'm going to show you mine. The very first time, it will ask you, would you like to connect to all your Facebook friends, your Twitter friends, your email? You can have six emails, eight emails, your LinkedIn, your Pinterest, whatever your networks are. And if you put in your passwords one time, then it takes all your contacts, and I'll show you like I for Irene. So Irene is, there we go. There's, I hope you didn't mind me showing it. So this is Irene Wheeler, so I can connect. And if I wanted to send her a message, I know Irene, I know through email too, but else, how else do I know Irene? Through Facebook. So if I go up here and say, Thanks for coming today. Hope you don't mind me doing this. And hitting enter, enter right here and send. On her Facebook right now, it says, thanks for coming today. So I didn't have to go, well, how about somebody, let me type in this. I'm going to type in Bill. Here's somebody named Bill. <laughs> no, I don't, I haven't, I'm open for him, but I've never really sat down and had a conversation. So he wouldn't know me from Adam, I'm sure. But I know I follow him on Twitter. So, if I type something here, it would show up where on his Twitter. Twitter. Now, if I tap map right there, do you see how the all the apps work and play together? Look what happens. This is contacts, people. And what's this? 
And you see I have two things open at once. Would you like to be able to open two things at once? Yes. Let me show you. Yes. So here's what we're going to do. Everybody, we're going to open two apps. If you would have the Maps app open and Internet Explorer open. Don't close them, remember? There's a difference. You're just going to have both open. Hit the Start button to get back. So Maps and Internet Explorer and go back to, your start, uh, go back to Internet Explorer being open. Have Internet Explorer open, but you know Maps is open. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> so, how can we do this? I have Internet Explorer open, and I know uh, Maps is open too. Let me show my, show my line to you. There we go. So, I have Internet Explorer open. I go to the upper left hand corner, but don't click. Okay, so everybody up in the upper left hand corner, not clicking. Pull your mouse down. Do you see a list of other things that you have open? Hopefully, one of these is your map app. Is it? See the names underneath? Watch me first. I'm going to click, not let go. I'm going to pull the map app to the left side of the screen until they go side by side. That takes, that's hard to do the first time. Let go. You guys got it. I can't believe that. That's hard to do. So you drag your map to the left side of the screen, pull it back to the left, I let go. Did you get it? Okay, try it again if you're having trouble. Now try this. You see the line in the middle? I now want you to pull the line so it's about two thirds the way over. So you have two thirds map and one third Christie. <laughs> Can you go the other way? Do two thirds Internet Explorer and just a little map. Do you see how you can kind? Now, based on the size of your screen and the resolution, you can actually have four things open at a time. But these screens aren't that high of a resolution, so usually only two. But if you had major, massive screen, you could do four. Let me show you on my touch screen. You can do three, and I'll let you do three, she said at least. So if I had a touch screen, I would just, uh, I could touch um, up here, and I can just pull these over to do other ones. So I'm just pulling it in and changing. It's much easier to touch. And I like this because sometimes I'll open my key as a teacher, you know, the key to my test, and I'll open a student's assignment over here and be able to judge if they're correct. Or maybe I'm looking at an email and mapping the address of where I'm heading at the same time. So you can actually do more things at once <coughs> this way and then pull it back and forth. You say, well, how about if I don't want this? Just pull that line. Here's the line that I'm talking about. Oh, click and pull it to the edge, and it will be a full screen again. So you can pull this all the way over. Pretty cool? Can you make it horizontal instead of vertical? Like yeah. I oh, okay. <laughs> And if you pull it all the way over to the to the far right, how do you get it back? Because I can't. Then you have if you wanted to, it's 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 full size again. You have to go back to the left, pull it over, and start again. So you have one thing open, and then you can pull another thing onto your screen. These screens are wide enough to do three. On my computer, I only can do two. So I'm a little more limited than you are. So um, also to show you some other pieces and parts, look right here. What does this one say? Sky drive. Sky drive. What SkyDrive does is this. It stores any of your files up in the cloud. And SkyDrive is already part of your new CVCC mail. So I thought what I'd do to close today is if you look up on my screen right now, I'm going to go to the new CVCC email that our school set us up with, right? Does this look familiar to everybody? Just watch online. I'm logging into my CVCC school email. And William has already put your SkyDrive in your email, whether you've noticed it or not. Hmm. Do you all see it up there? It's called the SkyDrive. You say, well, what's a SkyDrive, Corinne? Well, a SkyDrive lets you store <laughs> files. And if you link this account to your Microsoft account, then this same, we go back, this same SkyDrive would be those same files. So you don't have to log all the way into your email. You say, why would I store files here? 
these are all my PowerPoints that I show in class, backups of my book pages, CBCC stuff, and no matter where I am, I can sit down on any computer and get to my stuff. I don't have to run around with a USB drive. So here's what we're doing in our Microsoft Office classes at CBCC. When students open up Microsoft Word, we're making every student create a Microsoft account. And when they save anything, let me show you, they're going to file, save as the new Microsoft Office 2013 or 365 saves by default, guess where? <coughs> SkyDrive. So we're not requiring students to have USB drives anymore. And I have found that so much better for my students. Before, every other day it was, I lost mine. I'd be in your office dropping off these USB drives every 10 minutes because they left them. So as a campus, we're trying to get the students off these USB drives that could have viruses and all other kind of messes to get them to start using the SkyDrive so that they'll have an online portfolio of all their assignments throughout their entire college career. And when they get in the professional sense, they'll be able to access some of these items. Does that kind of make sense? Did you, say it? Okay. you have 25 gigabyte. Every faculty member and student has 25 gigabyte, and that's a lot. I want you to understand most of these USB drives only usually have eight or two, or this has 25. Is that only with the Office 365? The Office 365 that the school has, Microsoft gave us to us free, it didn't cost anything. But uh, yeah, we all get 25 gig. If you were just off the street, they give anybody in the world seven gig for free. But if you're in education, you get 25. But we don't have that yet. Yes, you do. Yes, we do. And, we're, and so if I'm using Word on my computer, how do I get to that? So up in the upper right hand corner, <coughs> you go into Word, you pick switch account, and you put in your CBCC email address, and that will take you to the same SkyDrive that is in your email and soon onto your main computer, Windows 8. So you'll have this one cloud floating around that ties you to all your stuff. So if you're at home and you're 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 in your cloud, and then you don't want to be you don't want to stay on the internet the whole time. Once you get cut, turn off your internet, are you still in the cloud? Can you still get your stuff? With Windows 8, if you had Windows 8 at home, it could sync what's in your cloud on your local computer while you're on it. Okay. So, like, let's say I'm on a plane, I don't have internet always. Then I could still have all of my stuff locally. Okay. But as soon as I get back on the internet, it will sync those files together so that they're now the same <coughs> as maybe they were different. For so I can while. save it at home and then when I yeah. sync in here, it'll sync my home. So what I would really recommend for everybody is just go to that Microsoft, you know, login.microsoftonline.com, start putting all of the files that you need everywhere, your syllabus or some of your, you know, instructional files in that little SkyDrive space and no matter where you go, you'll start being able to find things. So think of it as a big drop box that follows you. So it's it's kind of convoluted, but let's finish class just to make sure everybody remembers everything. Okay, how do you know what programs? Go back to your start screen. Show me all the programs you have running right now. How do you do it? Top left. You just keep clicking. You can see what you have running right now. How do you close any of those items that you have running right now? Pull from the top down. If you're in an app, I'm going to open my camera app. Look right here. I have a camera on mine. So if I'm in my camera app, how do I go back to my start screen without closing this? You can hit the button here. How about if I want to do it with my mouse? And how about if I want to do it with my charms? I hit this start button right here. But it's still open. Let me prove it to you. Do you see it right there? So it's still active. And if I click through it, I would still be here and I could keep seeing all my things. Okay? Tell me how to open the charms with the with your mouse. Pull down. Everybody open your search chart. Type in Einstein. EI. Can you find out who Einstein is? <laughs> Good. 
How can you close the screen? Pull it down. Let's talk about turning it off. <laughs> Everybody open up your charms. This is called your charms bar. Are you all starting to see there's a big learning curve here? If I were you, I'd really recommend, while this is still in your head, <laughs> ask the IT department to put Windows 8 on your computer. I know it's a big leap, but if you wait six months from now and you don't have another Windows 8 computer in your life, you're gonna probably forget about it. And you know sooner or later, it's just going to show up on your computer, and that might not be a really happy day, unless you may have done it. So um, let's go down. Uh, and if you guys ask, I would like to do more classes that are more advanced than just yeah. the basics and so forth. But uh, you know, I'll do any of these things for free um, anytime. But they have to ask me. So just tell me when you guys want it, because I'd be more than happy. But I think I think a lot of faculty members think, oh, I can deal with Windows 8. I don't think they can without a little bit of training. I really don't. Well, and even if you have it at home, yeah. how many have learned yeah. something and you have it at home? I had it at home, but I have a lot of it. How can you get rid of the stupid time thing? Time. And any time you open the charms, the time shows up just to ask. But they keep popping on and off periodically, too. And sometimes it calls. Only when you open different. the charms. It's the oh, really? Time. That's what so, and this is helpful for me. I can see how good my internet connection is and how much battery power I still have. So that's there. And let's look at devices, everybody. Did everybody, we're on the charms bar on the right, and we came down and clicked um, settings. Let me show you two things here. Do you all see the word personalize? Let's go up to personalize. I'm sorry, I'm my fault. That's my fault. Uh, charms bar settings. Do you all see the word personalized? Click there. I want you to start clicking all the squares at the top. <coughs> start clicking around. Have a good old time. Does it do anything for you? Mm -hmm. We are pe people who like to make ourselves individuals. <laughs> So therefore, now if you make your settings here and you've synced it, what will happen when you log on another computer? Yeah. You can click colors in the second category for backgrounds and then different accent colors. Can you have a picture of yes. in Rails some way to put your own picture on here? I'm not as your background, but you can for your lock screen. I'll show you. Let me show you that in a second. So we all see the personalized? See, we, they've got the uh, CVCC one in there, Corinne. Yeah, you can. Yeah, um, they've done it in their special them. settings. Yeah. Uh, but th that's because they changed this particular one. Let me show you, um, click on the background of your page before we close down. Um, everybody go up to your name in the upper right hand corner. Click there. Do you see something called change account picture. Click there, let me, we don't have time to go into this deeply, but this is where everything else is. This is how you put your picture in there if you want. I make all my students put their picture in, and here's why. As I walk around the class, I forget their names pretty quickly. So I can now walk around and go, Julie. <laughs> and um, all these things. <laughs> Uh, and if they try to log on to somebody else's computer and grab their files, I can see it's not them. So this will be great in the labs. <laughs> Look under sign-in options on your left. Do you see this? This is how you put in the picture passwords if you wanted to. Um, things like that. So this is where stuff is hiding uh, that we didn't go over. Everybody go back to your start screen by hitting the start and let's show you how to shut down in our final moments. I want you, everyone, to come over here and open your charms bar. Now you know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> come down to settings in the bottom right hand corner. We already know this is how you personalize. But let me show you this. This is how you connect to a wireless network. You know, you get to a place like CBCC. This is how you can connect. This is where your speaker is. If you want to lock up your screen. And guess what this is? Your power. So we click power to shut down. And you can now pick, in our case, shut down. All right, you get the charms so let's come back. Up, the edge. up to the top. Oh, sorry, right there. Go down to settings and power. And 
and shut down. Tomorrow, we, are we doing this class from 10 to 12 in the same room? So if you have some colleagues that you think this would be helpful for, if you want to come back, you can again uh, to get more familiar with it. Um, let me ask a question. If you are a business teacher, you cannot answer this because you can get a free book anyway on the Cengage website. Um, let me ask, um, how many tabs, shout it out, can you have open in Internet Explorer at a time? Who said 100? Who said 100? She's faculty. She's, no, she's, she's not. No, no, no. She's not business. Oh. She can't get a free oh, business book. Okay. Um, she's business and ally. Yeah, but they won't let her have one. <laughs> um, so if you if you want a book, you could ask some of the teachers to get you who are in the business department. They can ask for free copies because they know how to do that. Um, but uh, I hope this helped. Oh, what do you think? Yeah. How many hate it? Oh, do you see some of the merit to it? Could you print out the instructions for syncing and share with us? Um, with syncing and sharing? Well, syncing our computers with this or because the instructions are yeah I, I've got to I'm gonna have to check with William what if why it's not letting them sync so let me find that out first and I'll try to get William to communicate because um, we were doing it right and just said no oh, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone said that eight point one correct some bad stuff from the state. <gasps> well, we were should, using 8.1. 8 8 yeah, 8.1 is free to go from 8 to 8.1. We were all using 8.1. Here's what it added. Um, do you remember when we were right here, there was the start button? That wasn't at 8.1. And 8, it didn't fix anything that was bad. It just made a few easier transitions. Okay. So if we bought one that was just 8.0, probably just. Yeah, um, I, if I were you, here. Microsoft's going to push you to 8.1 soon automatically. <laughs> So you go to the Windows Store and update it, or just wait till Microsoft pushes it on you. They will. Now they were already talking about 8.2 and 9, weren't they? Um, April 2015, another year and a half away. Uh -huh. So it's not for a while, but it's going to keep moving forward. But it's going to look just like this. We're just going to add more features to it. Now, forget, how do we go to, to try to tie our account to Microsoft? Um, if you try to do anything like buy, go into a store and buy an app. You try to do music, it'll keep popping up that you need this account. Um, technically, you could have a, a, another Microsoft account and use that. You wouldn't have to tie it to your CVCC. Um, so you could do that that way. Either way. Yeah, you have a Microsoft account when you've got a Hotmail account? Yeah, if you have Hotmail, your Hotmail would work too. If you just go to Outlook.com, you can make a free Microsoft account I mean, anyone time or a Hotmail. Account. Sure. Right? Sure. We're just trying to make it where it's your well, you know, I'll get them. I'll get them after. Uh, was this helpful, everybody? Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. And I'm around campus every day, so I can help you anytime. Uh, but if I were you, I would uh, start to make the change over because um, it's coming. And so many students, what, what frustrates me, I'll okay, end with this, and I'll probably get my hands back for saying it, but so many of our students already have Windows 8. This is the only thing that they're selling in the PC store. So I'm hoping our campus switches as soon as possible because our students, it's kind of silly to teach them an older technology that <laughs> they were supposed to do it this semester, but one of the deans, not, not my dean, said, no, 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 we're, it's too different. But our students are very frustrated in my class because they all have Windows 8. Our school has Windows 7. And it's just been very difficult. And they're very angry that we're teaching such old technology. I, yeah, they took it off. So uh, it's just very frustrating for us, you know, to be teaching something that the students, you know, by the time they get their businesses, they're going to be using Windows 8. So it's frustrating to me. But that's just, I'm going to get my hands up for saying that. But that's true. Have a good day. Okay.